<laughs> I love when that happens. Uh, hey guys, welcome back to Mainframe Comic Con. I see you, Lawrence Plume, down there in the background. Looking all excited, ready to get going on Mainframe Comic Con Day 2, Hall A. A very special episode of Fogler's Fiction, sans Dan Fogler at the moment, but I'm sure he's going to be joining us uh, at some time. There he is! I just saw him pop up, guys. So, please help me in welcoming the creators of the awesome comic book, Fish Kill. They're going to be running through uh, the first, I think, couple issues of the book we're doing a live like a directorial commentary almost uh with all the creators lawrence bloom ben temple smith one of my favorite artists of all time and uh, a man who speaks for himself mr dan fogler the guy who crushed it in the walking dead last night man holy <laughs> shit <laughs> dan you there man hey ah! i'm gonna back out mm -hmm. but before i do i just want to say you absolutely crushed it yesterday on mainframe dan Oh, thanks, man. That was I'm, I'm trying that to was set up my standing. I'm trying to how, how hmm, Cam, Mike, how am I doing uh, here? So Ben oh, Lawrence, how's everybody uh, doing, man? What's good, up, good, bro? Good. You can hear me, right? Good. Yeah, yeah. Everybody looks great, man. Everyone's how's the, how's my how's my sound here? Okay. You sound like a million bucks. Oh, I got good. You Dan, sound as good as you look. Dan, you got us banned in all right, guys. We got a what? We got a, we got, got banned? banned in New Zealand. We get banned. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you no, mean? The video got taken <laughs> down in New Zealand. The New Zealand is not a fan. <laughs> why? Why? Because because of the music? We don't know. We're fine. Uh, the doorbell <laughs> is my, the funniest part. Is the doorbell? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk we'll, about we'll, that off camera. We'll, we'll talk, talk about that later. Okay, uh, so well, guys, uh, you guys have fun, man. We're gonna run through your good. book, so I'm gonna back out. Have a good time, man. Talking Thanks, to Good to see you guys, gentlemen. Oh, wait, wait. let's not put that up quite yet. Let's not put that up quite yet. Okay, how you doing? What's up? Oh, I think we'll my own up, man. This is gonna be. <laughs> what, what is going on? <laughs> it's really hot there, huh? Where are you, man? Seattle. Okay, so it's also crazy there, right? No, uh, it's less crazy now, but I'm in a non-crazy bit. But it's probably going to be a record hot day. But because it's Seattle, almost no one has air conditioning generally. So it's going to be 10 degrees hotter inside. It's going to be great. Were there like nonstop riots or something? I, I heard crazy things going on. They had a lot of stuff downtown. And then they had the, the Chaz or the Chop where they just, the, the cops right. weren't there for a month or something like a month. So it's like not as bad as people are making it out to be or no? It was what? Not as bad as everyone's making it out to be? There were incidents. I mean, when you... That's so like the way the accidents and hints and allegations. When people know there's a vacuum, and like yeah. even if police are elsewhere dealing with protests and riots, all the other stuff, other people take advantage of that. So, yeah, yeah, it's like there was a few incidents in the in the chop chairs, but I don't know. It's like both sides are kind of like putting everything out there, and you see. A lot. I I never I didn't get to visit before um, <laughs> uh, it got clean. Big hi to Ben from London. Okay, cool. So we're gonna be having. We're gonna have people uh, uh, giving comments throughout that we could they can ask questions too. Great, we'll be able to answer a lot of questions at the end. Uh, oh, I just are we allowed to swear, or do we have to be child friendly? No, no, no. no. I, I, hey, yeah. children. <laughs> no, no, this is not child friendly. No, at least I don't. Uh, my stuff is always R rated. Say hi, Rich. <laughs> Rich Johnson's hey. in the chat. Uh, welcome to the Heavy Metal presents Fogler's Fictions Fish Kill Creator Commentary Panel. Um, let me introduce my uh, co-conspirators here. <laughs> um, we got Lawrence uh, Blum, a uh, longtime friend. I'll, I'll, I want to. I'll give you more of an introduction later. Uh, actor, co-writer, and and the um, amazing uh, Ben Temple Smith is us. Uh, is us is with us. Uh, and I'm just love from Australia. I promise. I promise. He falls <laughs> off. But we're happy. He's so happy he's here. I'm happy you exist, Mr. Temple Smith. Um, yes. Lawrence, Lawrence, um, how does it feel, my friend, to be? Uh, I told you we were going to be on a panel at a you con did. talking about our book. You did, and it's. it's I always mean? tell you, it's it's just surreal, bro. As because we're both geeks, man. It's like I look at my comic collection, and I'm like, wow. I have a comic that I did with Dan, Ben Temple Smith drew it, and this is just, it, I pinch myself every day, man. Every day. Because okay, it's let's just talk unbelievable. About, let's talk about Temple Smith for a second, all right, man? Like, if you give me five bucks, I'll pinch you. 
All right. Well, Five bucks? Just well, like ten. 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 Depends <laughs> where you want to be pitched. I, I, you know, but Temple Smith, I started reading his stuff um, with 30 Days a Night. Okay. I, you know, a lot of people, I think, became fans during that. Thank you. And um, and obviously, that was all Steve Niles, though. Say, say that again. That was all Steve Niles. He's the reason that was good. It wasn't all Steve Niles. Come on, that was bro. my first book. That was my those, first real book. Those vampires were scary. Those are scary, right. and they were. And it's hard to recreate something. And you guys recreated this, you know, age old genre um, with those vampires, and um, just how horrifying they were and um it went on to be a big movie i think that's you know that's a major testament to you and uh, your the look of it man absolutely and okay so uh temple smith i i didn't see i didn't know this i went you know i like to go back and uh when i interview people i like to go back and you know really see what they've they've been doing and, and i didn't, didn't know the, the bad karaoke i did in the philippines did you <laughs> No, that I was like that. I, that's I was going to bring that up. I was going to. I was hoping you were going to sing a song for us. <laughs> I, was, I was drunk, so you get me drunk, I'll do it. Um. So, uh, yeah. So, oh, by the way, what what the what uh, Chuck was talking about earlier, um, and Chad was talking about. We did yesterday, um, and then there'll be a there'll be a um, a recording, a link of it out soon in, in the next uh, twenty four hours. We did this. The Walking Dead at home house party. I got a bunch of the cast. Norman Reedus showed up. Like we got all these, like a, like nice. twenty people from the cast, and we put on like a house party. Everyone was dancing, and anyway, it was really fun. I'm I'm actually like it, I was nervous because I felt like I was actually throwing a party. It was crazy. Uh, anyway, so Temple Smith. Okay, I had no idea about the Todd McFarlane uh, Hellspawn. Uh, yeah, it's my first work, man. So your first. Give me a joke. He okay. Yeah. So I didn't know this. So this I want to know what this is. is. Thank you. And I, I and 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 I love Spawn. Okay. I do too. And, and okay. And and be, and you know we'll we'll see later. Spawn comes up in Fishkill because of the connection to Al Simmons in my mind. Um, but it's so funny how there's so many synchronicities. So so Hell Spawn. Okay. So McFarlane, who I love. My first comic books were amazing. Spider-Man, the Hulk, you know, anything that he did. I had the Wolverine poster on my wall with the the, the Hulk reflected in the fucking uh, claws. I, I love McFarlane, okay? Um, and the fact that he gave you your first job? Well, his art director saw me on a forum. And I said, oh, I like your stuff because it was a comics forum back in the day. And yeah. uh, I tried out and I got the... It was technically my first work. I did like a half an issue following Ashley Wood. If you know Ash, if you think my shit's okay, then Ashley Wood is God. So okay. I followed him and did a couple issues. And then 30 Days a Night happened at the same time. Wow. So that's my first complete finished work of a three issue miniseries. But I was still doing Hellspawn for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it was my first job. What wow. issue? What issue? And I got, my first paycheck was mailed to me, the only paycheck ever mailed to me. And he signed it. The same way he signs all this comic. Work. Oh wow! wow. <laughs> I was like, did I didn't you believe it. it. I thought it was That's a joke. Awesome. Like, did you put it on your joke. wall? Did, did you, you it cash it? Did you cash it? I had I cashed it and I didn't think because I didn't. This was before decent tech. I should have made a copy, but yeah, take a picture or something. Um, That's so I needed cool. the money. It was good money. <laughs> <laughs> money. What, what, what issue was that? Because uh, I wonder if I have it or uh, I have it. ten. I think it's ten or eleven. Wow! I, the, the fucked up thing is. Ashley Wood uh, did most of the issue, and I did like the last six or seven pages. Okay. But it had my art on the cover, and then the next issue I did, I think, all the interiors, and he had the cover because it was in transition because he was off the book. So, yeah, and then after that it was me and Steve. So, huh. And because I, I did Hellspawn with Steve Niles, there was a gap between issues a lot, so we like, well, what do we do? So we decided on 30 Days a Night, and then, yeah. Wow. So that's how that happened. Time I got to I got to read that comic. You know, cuz I I just became a huge fan of your work. I have to thank you for your bad taste in art. <laughs> Come thank on, you. Temple Smith. Yeah, I mean, you have you good taste it, but my eyes. You crushed listen, it, man. Works the Star Listen, you did Army of Darkness, Star Wars, GI Joe. This is like my, some of my favorite stuff. 
And okay, I gotta do a shout out to Ben McCool, who basically um, like sprinkled in some genius uh, here and there throughout Brooklyn Gladiator. And um, I did a book with Ben too. Yeah, that's yeah. so I I saw um, Choker, which he did with with uh, Ben, and I was like, ooh, I want Brooklyn Gladi Gladiator to look like this. You know, um, it seems like it's a very similar world uh universe and they, and they could exist in the same universe um <laughs> and uh, so actually ben and i were we're talking about trying to combine that stuff but you know you maybe down, maybe down, yeah right maybe down the line sometime um but he introduced me to you he introduced me to to simon beasley so these are the guys he worked on brooklyn gladiator he so oh, my favorite like my favorite artist like I'm, I'm like a kid in the candy store right now being able to work my favorite artist so thanks ben you've met him, right? sorry you've met him ben uh simon uh i met him over the phone we were supposed to we when facetime and stuff he's a character man yeah if you ever like because <laughs> you've read lobo right lobo's of course like, he of course. is lobo he's exactly i was gonna say lobo. that i was gonna say he's that. amazing <laughs> yeah so. he uh yeah he's such a character i was supposed to meet him at a comic-con and uh you know in like hunter s thompson fashion he just didn't show yeah. up you know he was like people were lined up and he was just uh you know he was rock he was rock and roll you know you guys would go well together <laughs> and his art's amazing too so well i yeah. when he did the grendel war child covers that was just that blew me yeah. away man oh yeah that well between good. yeah between heavy metal between lobo like he was he's such a huge influence okay so Temple Smith working on Batman. Okay. I've like, done a bit of everything except Marvel. Yeah. Well, except I've Marvel. done some Marvel, but. Why is that? Oh, you technically have done Marvel. I don't know anyone at Marvel and they don't ask me. But oh, I've done, uh, I did a big wall exhibition painting in Australia to celebrate yeah. their anniversary. And I did a, a some sort of limited Punisher print once. But I've never done actual comics. Cool. So, so. Can I ask you a question? If you yeah, could do a Marvel you. character, what Say would what? it be? You could pick a Marvel character to draw. What would it be? Ghost Rider. Ooh. <laughs> which I think just got canceled. So. Oh my god. Uh, which which character? Which version? Oh. Whichever Jonathan one the class like. Original, right? Like the, original the Ghost Rider? Textiera, like uh, the, the what I know of of as classic uh, Ghost Rider, which was Mark Textiera era. He's just got a good leather oh, jacket, spiky oh. shit. Oh. Textiera, man. I like how that guy draws saber tooth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Lawrence Blum, my yeah, buddy, sure. who, who has who has a Marvel connection because uh, he's in the Marvel Cinematic TV history. Because <laughs> Hook me up, man. <laughs> you are in, you're in Daredevil. You play yes. Okay. If you don't recognize I, Lawrence, Lawrence has played every cop in everything you've ever seen. <laughs> That's probably, probably. Yeah. It's cops he's in everything. Between the two of you, you've been everything. Right, we're covering all the bases, pal. Yeah. Oof. I actually <laughs> got to hit the kingpin over the head, and I afterwards people were like, "You lo you survived. You're the only person that got to hit the kingpin, and you survived." Oh, right. <laughs> so you what way? You were like a you were a correctional officer. A corrections officer. That's yours. Put it on. Whack. And then oh. I didn't have a. It was corrections officer, but my name tag was like Officer Zerolinsky or whatnot. But I didn't know it. A week later, it's like Lawrence Blum, Officer Zerolinsky, Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe. Somebody looked it up <laughs> and posted it. It's hilarious, man. You're it's in, great. man. You're in. You know, it's yeah. And, and Daredevil is so cool. I great. love Daredevil. Okay, Same. so Dare Daredevil, The Punisher, Spider Man, Wolvie, um, The Ghost Rider, all these guys who who came through New York. You know, all these guys. Yeah, Captain America too, man. Brooklyn. There you go. Okay, there you go. Okay, there you, you go. It, dude, you know. So, uh, sorry, Australia, but uh, <laughs> there's, I don't there's, care. I live in America now. Okay, good, good. Uh, I love Australia. Okay. <laughs> yes, everyone. We all love Australia, uh, but there's a definitely um, there's a connection here with New York, uh, Brooklyn, um, and um, so let's talk about. Let's talk about fish kill, okay? Uh, I was thinking back, and I was thinking like, how, how did we, 
how did we come up with this idea? And, and, and I don't know if you remember Lawrence, but um, I remember like, okay, whenever I'm, whenever I'm looking for collaborators, um, I'm always looking for collaborators. And, uh, and Larry was a bartender, uh, actor, friend, and we talked about comic books, you know, all, all the, all the time. And, and, and he, he knew, he knows a lot, he knows a lot about comic books. And, uh, and then when I'm sizing up, you know, someone to collaborate with them, um, I always ask the same question. I say, uh, if you had your druthers and your resources, you know, um, what would you make your comic book about, you know? And, uh, I, re I remember him saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lawrence, but I remember him saying that he liked cops and he liked uh, Green Lantern, you know, and and their code, right? Yeah. And uh, and then I, I then I started riffing on that, and I said, you know, I always wanted to do a story about the cop that was uh, stuck on the Brooklyn Bridge. Now I, I would walk across the Brooklyn Bridge all the time, back and forth to Manhattan, and the, and I would look at that guy stuck on bridge duty, the cop uh, on the Brooklyn Bridge, and I would think, you know. Like, what did that poor bastard do <laughs> to be stuck there? there? It's like he's in a cage, you know? Who did he piss off, you know? Um, and then what if the apocalypse begins? And he, this, this ultimate unlikely underdog, rises to the occasion and, and you know, becomes our savior, essentially. Um, and the name Fishkill... Uh, that's all Larry. Okay. So he, he mentioned living up in, in Fishkill, right? Or something like your connection. You know, I to shot something up there, but then I actually, there was a restaurant. It was just weird with you and I, man, where we always connect synergistically, bro. Yeah. And it's like, there's a restaurant called Fish in New York, which is gone. And I used to love it. And Dan had said to me, you have to understand something about Dan. I sometimes have too much verbiage. Dan will say in one sentence what I say in a paragraph. So he'll be like comic. And I'll be like, yeah. Do you want to work on a comic? I mean, he has to spell it out for me. But there was this, we talked cops and this restaurant fish, fish. And I was like, fish kill popped in my head. And then, of course, I ended up shooting a TV series years later in a place called Fish Kill. And it was just, it was just another one of the reasons why I meant to work on this, man. What's crazy? Yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of synchronicities. He, he was connected to Fish Kill New York. I said, ooh, that's a good name, you know. And then nothing really happened with it. And and I and I went on and I'm working on Brooklyn Gladiator, and which is my dystopian, you know, sci-fi New York 2033 um cautionary tale about the coming technocracy. And I started realizing, holy shit, we're living in, you know, the sci-fi dystopia right now. I want to write a prequel to Brooklyn Gladiator. And um, I didn't know that. That's yeah. just wild, man. And then you I, know? you know, I realized, uh, so then I sent Larry the, the text, fish Excuse kill. Me. Can I tell him what, what yeah. exactly happened? Yeah. So yeah. I shot this TV show called Big Dogs in Fishkill, New York. And I'd never been to Fishkill. And I totally had forgotten about the, the comic. So I swear, for six months on and off location, I get a, uh, a text from Dan, fish kill. And I'm like, who the fuck does Dan know? You know someone on, on the show? He's like, the guy. And I'm like, which guy do you know? He's like, comic. And, I'm, and then he's like, planet, 1230 tomorrow, which means I want to meet you at Forbidden Planet, our spot in the city at 1230 tomorrow to discuss a comic. But I didn't realize it was fish kill. And then I showed up there and I had all these ideas I was going to throw at him. And he's like, the guy. And I was like, the guy. And he's like, the wrong side of the tracks. And I'm like, wow. And then all the stuff we had talked about just started to happen and we probably jammed this issue then we just started jamming the first issue out man right you know and, um, so as as fishkill evolved you know we wanted to make him controversial you know we we um we wanted readers to to question whether he was a good guy or not um and we wanted uh the hero to question himself you know um and so suddenly He's like this lone wolf patsy character uh, who's blamed for this incident, this attack. Um, and now he has to save the world while proving his innocence, okay? So it's like the fugitive. Um, so we have all these elements. And, and then there's like the final layer of 
how how can we make this guy more controversial? Um, and so why so why the question here is why make him black? You know, he's a black Jew. Um, obviously, uh, Lawrence. Well, I don't know about how obviously, but Lawrence and I are, are both Brooklyn Jews, New York Jews. Oh. Um, and, um, you know, we know that that side of it, you know, um, and, the, the, you know, and, and we come from there's there's a long line of, uh, you know, of old school Jewish, of stock, old school Jewish East Coast comic writers who created great black superheroes, you know, um, Stan Lee, Black Panther, Falcon, uh, Marv Wolfman, uh, Blade, Cyborg. Okay, so that, but it's it, it, it's not lost on us that we're two white Jewish guys writing a black character here, and you know, so it's very important to me during these, you know, volatile times that we're that we're authentic here, you know, and and so, like, thank God um, we have. We, it just, it's just amazing how things just kind of happen perfectly um, where we have Joe Illich now who happens to be uh, a, a brilliant black man who is now the, um, the head editor over at Heavy Metal. And um, I'm, I'm just so happy to have him uh, as overseer over you know Fogler's fictions, you know it, it's it's his blessing is very important to me during these. I, I these didn't know that. That's time. that is awesome, man. That's great. Yeah, he. Well, yeah. I mean, I I love heavy metal, um, and I love that he's been uh, put in place as the head editor there, and um, and honestly, you know, I mean, okay, so it's so important to be authentic, um. And Joe is brilliant, you know. He 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 was working over at DC on 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 Batman, you know. And so his wisdom is extremely welcome. This happens to be a detective comic, so he's working on the greatest detective stories ever. Um, and Joe happens to be black, you know, and and he happens to be the perfect editor for Fishkill, and that's just it's just I'm just very happy that it worked out like that. It makes it makes my makes my soul very happy and i think that he is um just that he's looking out and making sure that we're uh, authentic and we're gonna i'm gonna have him on the 40 experience podcast and we're gonna go deeper into um what he thinks about it uh and i'm really excited to to talk to him about it um and i really i would love for him he's a, he's a writer i would love for him to come on and and you know, write it, write a chapter or five. You know, um, would be amazing. Um, so, I just want to talk about the fact that you know we make him. He he's this. He's he's black, um, and some of the reasons that I, that I did that was well, you know, why the fuck not? Um, but also. Um, Brooklyn Gladiator, while I was working on Brooklyn Gladiator, it's a world where the sun is just blocked out. <laughs> okay, so, you know, uh, even even the 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 people of color are pale, you know? <laughs> so I was like, he, wow, we we got to get some, we got to infuse some color into fish kill here. Um, and like I said before, um, I also love Spawn and Al Simmons, you know? And if... Um, and I feel like they're they're kind of kindred, you know. Both soldiers, both sell a, a large portion of their soul, um, uh, in order to try to find the path of the light side. Um, and um, so now we had this 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 layer, this controversial layer of okay, so now he's a black guy, he's a black Jew. Um, and it, 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 now we raise the question of during these attacks, um, why are whites labeled lone wolf and, you know, people of color are labeled, labeled like a domestic terrorist, you know? So now, so now it's things started to become even more complex. Um, I love a character with a good Achilles heel, uh, fish kill 
he's got flaws you know he's like he's like the rock meets rocky balboa you know <laughs> he's uh, and and when you meet rocky he's at the end of his boxing career you know um and uh he looks like he's just like the ultimate underdog um why don't we get into talking about uh, fish kill right now. Why don't we why don't we throw up the comic book? We'll we'll show Ben's beautiful art, and we'll take it uh, page by page. <clears throat> um. Oh, how do we see the full image here? Or how do I? Uh, oh, I got. Let me see. Shrink it. Enter full screen. No, I'm only seeing the top. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. So can I control that? Oh, I see. Okay, you're gonna control this. Okay, so this is the. Uh, this is the cover. Um, okay, we're not going to be able to see the, the full page by itself, or we're going to, is going to be like this? Uh, Chad, whoever's controlling this, are we going to get a full page here? Maybe not. Okay. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll, we'll go through it like this. Um, huge shout out to Justin Molman. Who big, we, big shout out to Justin Molman, man. Justin Molman, who helped me produce. He, he put a lot of money into Fogler's fiction, so bless his his sweet, fragile heart <laughs> for helping us uh, get to completion here. Um, fish kill. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me, you know what? I'll, I'll, here we go. I'll put it up on my computer so I can see the full thing as we go along. Um, here we go. Fish kills well, a lot. This size, you can read the dialogue and see most of the panels as you scroll down for like yeah, storytelling. It's beautiful. Yeah, like, we'll it's not that. bad when you get to the yeah, pages. Fine. It's fine. Uh, Fish kills a love story wrapped in a modern noir that takes our hero detective Bart Fishkill so far down the conspiracy rabbit hole that he starts to question his own sanity. As the story unfolds, the reader, along with the detective himself, begins to wonder whether he isn't really the villain in the first place. When another 9-11 style of attack occurs, it sends New York City spiraling toward martial law. And while trying to uncover the truth of who done it, the authorities find themselves blaming Bart for the attack, labeling him, labeling him a terrorist, while others flock behind him as a revolutionary of change. Welcome to New York City, 1 p.m. today. Uh, some martial law, man. You're going you're gonna to see there's a lot of prophetic... Um, themes <laughs> that come up Relax. during. We wrote this three years ago, man. It's crazy, dude. Okay, so crazy. Uh, first, uh, first page we got Lieutenant Render. Let's let's move it along here. Uh, I had this idea. That I wanted I wanted every chapter to begin with someone screaming "fish kill." <laughs> someone, you know, he's always in trouble, and uh, fish kill. God damn. What kind of moron are you with no fucking warrant? They're suing us. You know that? Okay, so now we got police brutality. Um, off screen, Fishkill says they broke the law. So this this gentleman, I always imagine like um, for Lieutenant Render, I always imagine like, uh, I don't know about you. Um, I don't know about you, Larry, but I always imagine like a Samuel L. Jackson or something. And if, or if it was animated, if Keith David, who did the Spawn voice, you know, if he wanted to <laughs> any of these voices, I would be incredibly happy. I just hear, I just always hear him in my head. Um, and, uh, of course, we know Phil Lamar and we know uh, Carrie, uh, Carrie Payton. Any of these guys would be amazing for an animated. Um, okay, you cracked skull, 13 broken ribs. You're like a fucking stalker. Ah, they resisted arrest. He deserved it. She would have ran. Was a two eighty eight lieutenant? Two eighty eight. Look it up. Child <laughs> abuse. It's child abuse. Um, so that's his. That's his Achilles heel. I love a good flawed hero. Bart. He. He's like the patron saint of punks, of street kids. He can't help. Um, saving kids. He can't hurt women or children. That's that's his. That's his thing. Um. And it gets him in trouble a lot of time, as you can see. Uh, look at that face. He okay, Ben. We described mm -hmm. what we we described what Fishkill looked like. 
And you sent me. Uh, all I remember is it kind of a cross between The Rock and Stallone kind of thing. Yeah. So I'd try and get his eyes and his nose kind of like that was tough. You did <laughs> it though, man. The, because the, when you it, said that, I was like, "Oh, The Rock," and because because his heritage is a little different, and he's got a little he's small, right? Oh, he's gigantic. Small. Yeah, he's big. So I'm, like, oh, I'm gonna try and work that in facially too. So, yeah, um, and he's also half Jewish. You know, he's he's a he's a he's a, gi he's a gigantic mutt. You know, he's that's like the the ultimate underdog, and he and he's got that um, he's got that thousand yard stare in his eye. You 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 hit it perfectly. His whole life, he's just had people, uh, you know, authority figures screaming at him. And he's just, he's in another place. So they would have got off. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant, even listening, detective? Nah! He's, he's back in the war, man. He's back in Afghanistan. He's not even there. He's daydreaming. So I like a good comic. I like a comic that gets right into the action. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no waste of time. Here, here we go. It's a flashback, and he's a one-man one army. And he's taken on the whole, the whole war himself. Um, it's like we talk, talked like he has a little bit of like uh, Conan the Barbarian's code, you know? Yeah, Conan he's got a berserker. Like, he's got the berserker. berserker. Yep. I always like a good berserker rage, you know, Wolverine. Um, so uh, he he runs out of bullets. He starts just killing these guys with his bare hands and a knife, you know. Um, look at him, that steam rising off of him and the hot knife. <laughs> uh, so I love this part. Back in the war, we thought we knew what we were fighting for. Look at that the big truck full of heroin. All right? Most of the time. Most of the time. We knew what we were fighting for most of the time. I've had authority issues my whole life, asked too many questions. That's why I made detective in the first place. And this guy screaming at him in his face his major or whatever. And then he flashes back to when he was a kid, when his dad was screaming in his face. From day one, I was instilled with an ineffable barometer of justice. I could just sniff it out, sniff it out. He's got, that's one of his super abilities. Uh, Larry can talk more on that. Uh, I didn't need some asshole adult telling me what was right. I know, I know, don't judge the packaging. Fucking Ben, and look, at the, look at the reflection of little Fish kill in the eyeglasses. Brilliant. Uh, this is a dude, you this is a script, script, right? Wasn't it in the script? Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna say you, yeah, but you, you can write it in the hold on, hold on. You can write something in a script, but you hope that there is an alchemic response when you hand it over to a, a genius artist like you that brings it to life. And you brought this to life, man. Like we talked about, you elevated it, man. You elevated it. You took it and you were like, he would send me a picture. I'm like, you ready? And I like, get it. I go, Dan, that's our guy. He goes, I know. And he gets the emotion. He gets, you get yeah. the emotion, Ben. It's all, listen, we're, we're two actors. We're, 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 we're cinematic dudes and you're, you're, you're matching the emotion beautifully. And you're, you, you're just, I, I am told that I do emotions okay and teeth. <laughs> teeth and emotions. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> they say I was kicked out because of insubordination. Only me and my Sarge knew the real reason he freaking headbutts him. Uh, dishonorable my ass. I walked away because that war made zero sense and it stunk to high hell. Uh, you know, look at him, man. He's smoking his, his lady brand cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, you know, his... That's one of his characteristics. You know, obviously, uh, Lawrence and I are actors, and we like to build very complex characters. He's smoking those cigarettes. That's his, that's his mother. That's his connection to his mother. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, they and, were her cigarettes. She smoked that brand, yeah. and he smell comforted him. And his the smell, the smell. It's all about the smell. So you want to talk about his thing with, with smell? <laughs> so on? he's got, like, we talked, because... We have, there's a lot like Dan and I, we already have the last page written. The only guys I know about it is us. So we know this character and we discuss trying to make it interesting. He's got hyperosmia, which means that he has an enhanced sense of smell. 
but it's gonna it's connected to who he is as a, uh, you know from his father's uh, side and he is able to smell things and then he's able to remember where he smelled them it's almost like, like a, a smell map yeah like a remote know? remote viewing which came in handy in the war and the, um, so he's like i could smell oh that way and it could have been years ago it's almost you know people who are able to recall things he can do it by sense of smell and it's so, wild it doesn't know we can do it so you got berserker rage you got heightened smell you know fucking wolverine you know these are all influences um it smelled like a fucking scam. The <laughs> motor to bridge duty. Now get the you the bro the motor to bridge duty. Now get the fuck out of my precinct. Psh, story of my life. Look at him there. And he <laughs> and render just fuming. Um. Okay, so now we got the Brooklyn Bridge, my beloved Brooklyn Bridge, which I would walk over every single day. Look at that crowded. Uh, makes me sad. Um, and you had families and you, you, you matched it perfectly. And this is, this is a two page spread. The next page you see poor fish kill. Welcome to the rotten apple. And he's just sitting in his, sitting in his, his cell, his, his own personal jail cell, you know? Um, and you see he, guys in the summertime stuck driving around in one of those things. And you're like, how? Okay. At least they're, at least they're able to drive around. Okay. Those guys, they can't move. They're stuck. It's like a toll booth. They just watch people go, come and go all day, loving the bridge, loving the bridge. And they just <laughs> sit there with the fish kill look in their eyes, a thousand yard stare. Just they don't they're in their own worlds, man. And and um so there he is. He's like a like a monster, you know, stuffed inside. <laughs> he's too big for this vehicle, you know. And he's got his so let's go back up for a second. Uh to that last image, he's got his. I actually milk didn't know those things existed until this book. Yeah. I had to look them up, and now I see see them everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, those things. Like, like three wheel meter made vehicles. Yep. And can you imagine this guy is like he's like you know six nine. He's almost three hundred pounds, and they poor guy is stuff him in this. So and there he is with his lady brand cigarettes and his milk carton. So he's he's a guy. He's 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 traumatized this guy's a traumatized individual he's almost like a big child there's also like a you know mice and men thing going on here where he's he's got he's too strong for his own good like a lenny you know and um and there he is with his milk the other connection to his mother the other connection to innocence and and the milk carton becomes a huge metaphor uh as we continue um we it, we'll see here. So, uh, the name's Fishkill, by the way. Detective uh, Officer Bart Bartholomew Fishkill. <laughs> That's he's named after a saint, right? Uh, so next, the next line is, "Yeah, it's unfortunate, but my mother was a saint, so I ain't changing it." Okay, may she rip. And he chucks his lady brand cigarette out the window, and there he is drinking from the milk carton missing have you seen izzy first of all this was supposed to be lizzie but ben I mean, who, that was my ben izzy. no but i love no, it i you love know, it. It, it was there but uh in photoshop i must have accidentally deleted the letter or it didn't catch when i did it and then i just didn't think about because he's letters, letter ben did letters and art listen i'm, I'm always going to say yes like that, that was my that was the process throughout this whole thing and and, and the you know the cream know rises to the top I love that it's Izzy because it's a, it's also a question, you know, Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So he's stuck in limbo on this godforsaken bridge. It should have collapsed a hundred years ago, just like the whole system, but still it stands Swiss cheese, rust holes and all. <laughs> I'm very happy with that line. Have you seen Izzy the lost children? Okay. There's a lot of themes current themes coming up here um hard to fight crime when they stick you in your own personal jail cell and he just can't help but smell something wrong with this guy in the green jacket uh because he's a detective he's one of the greatest detectives ever and here he is stuck in a freaking penalty box Psh, freedom my balls he's looking at the freedom tower 
You seen what they try to pass off as a memorial of Ground Zero? Two empty black holes, just like his eyes. Okay. I was there the day the towers came down. Okay, so now he's flat. He's always daydreaming. He's always in his head. I was duped like everybody else. He's there at the 9-11. That's why I enlisted. Thought I could figure the whole mess out for America all by my lonesome. But the deeper in I went, the less sense it all made, and the harder it was to focus. Everything blurred. And there he is. You're matching that same shot ah! to him putting the pill in his mouth. Beautiful, Ben. So here I am back home where I thought I could make an actual difference. Don't even get me started on building seven. Whoa. Did I just say that out loud? Okay. I love that. Okay. He's this is like he's monologuing out loud. He's crazy. He's like Rorschach, you know? Um, I love that about him. And he's and he's fucking he's He's sensitive. He's paranoid about it. You know, he's a complex dude. Okay, here he is about to take this pill. Adorol. We call it. It's as as a. It's an homage to Adderall. It's Adorol. <laughs> okay, Adorol. So, so here he is. Someone's some, suddenly someone's tapping on the the window. It stops him from taking his meds. Wake up, Bart. You're monologuing again, son. Dad. Okay. Now he, he sees his fucking dead father. Ah, shit. Wait, come back. <laughs> Be alert, son, because the world needs more alerts. <laughs> Remember that old kids thing? Dad and the people on the bridge. Maniac. Jesus, dude. He's like a freak, you know. Sorry, sorry. And I love the, the anxiety on his face. Dad, wait. Fuck, fuck. Idiot. This is our hero right now. Everyone's, everyone's fucking shitting on him. And all his meds go falling onto the bridge. It's just his lowest point, man. Gone. Pshh. Focus, fish kill. Ah, maybe the universe is trying to tell me something. He, he hunched over that big bear of a man, hunched over, trying to scrape his meds off the floor. Shh. Shit, my last refill. A.D. A.D. After death. Maybe it's time to give up the good fight. You're going to see a lot of references to, you know, he's a black Jew. And uh, there's a lot of references to Jesus, you know. Not, you know, it just gets biblical. So this is my favorite fucking... <laughs> Page. This is my favorite page. Ben, you did a beautiful job. Leon, I love Leon. Leon is there's always two cops on the bridge. And they're always facing each Leon. other. And Leon, Leon is the regular guy. He's he's been on the bridge since day one. And here comes Fishko, who is just like he's like a week in. And he has this interaction with, with Leon. Uh hey Leon, you want another hot dog? Fuck off, fish kill. And yes. <laughs> and a large papaya juice. Okay, this is the comedy is beautiful. Leon means well. He's just been stuck on the bridge too long. Fuck you say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's monologuing <laughs> right in front of Leon. And Leon just looks at him like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? This I, I love this just sums everything up about look at look at him. He's he is a hero stuffed in this too tight suit. But and reluctantly, man. We talked about it. He's a reluctant hero, man. It's, but he's just such course, a good guy. He's the flawed you hero. He, he's got the Achilles heel. He's got, mm -hmm. you know, I, you, you got to love characters like that. And But this, yeah. I just love how you got the comedy, the look on Leon's face, like, what the? <laughs> Who is this fucking guy? And the fact that he's this flawed, monologue, monologuing, semi-crazy hero. Okay, let's keep going. Takes a certain amount of faith to eat a hot dog, <laughs> let alone two. Luckily, as of five minutes ago, I'm suicidal. 
Ugh, nitrates. Hold that thought. What? Look, he's, he's even monologuing to the hot dog guy. Okay, hold that thought. He's 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 sensing this guy with the green hoodie, man. He's not he's he's not he's no good. But he can't do anything about it. It's not my problem anymore. So far out of my jurisdiction is scary. And the cops who are supposed to be doing their job on the side, that, if you ever walk the bridge, it's, it's always happening. You have these two cops with freaking machine guns. And they're just, they're talking to some girl. You know, they're, it's like, it's, uh, that's what's happening here. Not really paying attention. Um, and here comes Fishkill bringing his hot dog to Leon. Hey, Leon, you owe me. And then the next page, kaboom. Leon's poor face <laughs> blown off. Here's the attack on the bridge. Fish kill in the middle of all of it. Just out of nowhere, like a movie. Bam. And uh, next page. So, you know, I'm a Brooklyn. I'm a Brooklynite, you know, and. I lived through I I lived through nine eleven. I was twenty blocks away from it when it happened. Damn. Having having this actually I actually had uh, Derek Robertson on the podcast recently. Um, and when I read the boys, there was in their version of uh, New York their their universe. Um, there's an attack on the Brooklyn Bridge, and when I read that, I it, was, it hit me so hard. And I was like, that was their version of 9/11 in that universe. And I was like, oh, if if there was ever a 9/11, just the symbolism, another 9/11 again in in hmm. New York, just the symbolism of taking down that beautiful bridge. Um, and that's what happens here. So it's an homage to the boys. It's also an homage to just my love of that bridge and. How terrible it would be if it was taken down. While I was flying like a rag doll through the debris, must have been a shock because all I can think was, fuck, that was my last picture of her. Oh, man. It's the last picture of his mother. And then the next shot is, whoo, his parents and holding their hurt children, his kid, mom. Oh, fuck. The emotional bab, you know, backdrop here. Felt like I was floating for a full sixty seconds, and he's still clutching that milk carton. Surreal shit happens, you know, like that when you're in a, a bomb situation. You fucking lose your shoes, but for some reason you're still holding your Coca Cola can or whatever the fuck, you know. It's crazy. You did a beautiful thing here, Ben. You the rain. The rain woke me. I don't know how long I was out. And there he is, lying there on his back. Like yeah. Jesus. Jesus with the... In the <laughs> almost on the cross there with the, the stab yeah. in the side. You know, that we'll talk about that in a second. There's a lot of reference here. You know, Jesus was a Jew. What color was Jesus? We, you know, we don't got a lot, of, a lot of time here, but these, you know, is... The idea of a, the the Messiah, the idea of an antichrist, fish kill, that's a synchronicity. The idea of fish kill and the reference to Jesus. And, man, all of these things have come up um, while well, during the evolution of making this. That moment for, forward, I finally knew I was done sitting in the sidelines. Ooh, look at that bridge. It looks like a goddamn fuse being lit. In my shitty little penalty box. Pretty sure the city won't bounce back too soon from a hit like this. Another goddamn 9-11. Not in this day and age. Not with the current administration. Going fuzzy. Got to hunker down, regroup. World needs more alerts. Fuck you, Pop. Thanks for the warning. And there's that the carton, the missing. Have you seen Izzy? Didn't look like it, but it was the quiet before the storm. What the fuck? Not a reference to that on the internet. And I had no fucking clue that my biggest lead to this whole giant clusterfuck just slipped through my bloody fingers. And there's that that milk carton sitting there. Um, 
I don't know if that resonates with any of the listeners out there. But we got about, you know what? Let's go to the next page. Let's go to, to the first page of issue two. So poor Fishkill. Fishkill. There it is. His name again. The Black Friday bomber believed dead. Fishkill was a loose cannon that went undetected by the NYPD until it was too late. He's the fucking patsy. They're blaming it on him. Someone put him there on that fucking bridge. There's Render. I mean, I knew Fishkill was a loser, but I never thought he'd stoop so low. I'm as shocked and appalled as you all are. No further questions at this time. And then we have the, the classic talking head news, guys. You may have been uh, off his medication leading up to the mass slaughter. Just another in a long line of domestic terrorists. The disgruntled and demoted detective sought revenge on the city that handed him a raw deal. And unfortunately for those seeking real answers, dead men tell no tales. We may never know the true motive of Bartholomew Fishkill. Okay, let's, 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 wait, wait, stop there. Okay, they're gonna have to read it. They're gonna have to read it. Don't show anymore. Let's take it off and let's spend the last five minutes here. Maybe take some questions. Yeah, um, man. I want. I got a question. Where can people pick this up? What is it on the shelves yet? <laughs> when is it on the shelves? I mean, my God, that was awesome. What an awesome table read, man. That was great. Hey, are we done? Are we we got we're done it uh, in like ten minutes or five minutes here, right? We got Greg Rucka. He's gonna he's about to come on. He's gonna talk oh. about uh, the old guard and all that. So yeah, you got you got. I, mean, I will say about. Three more minutes. So, oh, cool. where do you guys want to plug, man? Okay, yeah, plug away, dude. Plug Can away. Can I hang out? Can I hang Literally out? Get it. What are you working on, Ben? Throw it out there. Right now? Yes, sir. <laughs> awesome. What is that? I'm doing a bunch of like cyberpunk stuff. So, sweet. Really lead up to the game, cyberpunk. So, cool, man. Um, yeah, I, um, I'm excited to do more with uh, Temple Smith. I know you're a busy man, but you're my guy for this, Any, man. Anytime. Uh, anytime. You crushed it, bro. Crushed um, it, man. I think I still want you a big man. cover for the whole thing. So, Fogler's. Sorry, I'll do it. Oh, don't. Yeah, dude. We got time. It's going to be, uh, you know, the we're, we got four issues that are coming out over the next several months here. Uh, over, and we'll have the trade out uh, early spring. Um so we can put the we can we can we can put save it for that, brother. Um, thank you, guys. La, uh, Lawrence, come on, Dan. Thank you, bro. Thank you, <laughs> Chuck. Mainframe, heavy metal. Uh, to answer your question, heavymetalshop.com. Um, uh, www.foglersfiction.com. Uh, check it out, man. That's a, you, you can find all the comic books there, and. Um, Dan, uh, what, what I love about you, Dan, man, you're a guy of huge ideas. You know what I mean? You're like, you think big. Everything you do is so big. Uh, just even this. I mean, you're one of the few people at Mainframe who actually did a full uh, read-through of their comic. I mean, it was such a good idea. And I mean, the fans dug it. Well, you, that's awesome. I wish we could have taken questions. You know, we got to put all our skills in place here, man. We, we got to do a little acting, you know, you do, you do a little uh, a little uh, hosting, you know. 40 Experience podcast comes in handy in these scenarios. But, um, guys, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Please check out Fish Kill, Brooklyn Gladiator, uh, Moon Lake, my three titles that are coming out, uh, all Fogler's fictions from uh, uh, Heavy Metal Magazine, which, I mean – is another just, dream come true. Dream come yeah, true. I, you have your own imprint at this point. Still blows my mind, man. What did you say, brother? You have your own imprint at this point, man. You're that big. You're a big deal. I, I, well, we'll see. Not done with. We'll see if these take off. And we're, we definitely have a lot more material in store, don't we, Lawrence? Oh, my God. Yes, years. Dude, years. Have, and Ben, years I love stuff. I love Gotham by Midnight, by the way. Thank huge, you. Huge fan, man. Like that, that's, that was one of the first books that I found from you, and I was just an instant fan. Been a fan of you ever ever since. So I'm definitely going to start Thanks, picking man. up. Fish Everything Kill. usually goes to my Patreon right now, so I don't have much on the show. Except Fish Kill. Check out. Uh, Dude, I was going to say, you, you, you crushed it, bro, man. And Dan, this is just a dream come true, brother. And mainframe, yeah. thank you. And heavy metal, you know, but, and, and Ben, you just elevated it, man. It's just unbelievable. I mean that, sincerely. Uh, a lot of blood, yeah. sweat, and anxiety, and yes. alcohol. 
<laughs> Plenty. And, and oh, a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks. Hell yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Guys, thanks so much. Uh, thanks for donating Thank you. your time for the Hero Initiative here on Mainframe, guys. Uh, come back next time we do Mainframe. We will be doing another one in a few months. So, you guys, our door is always open. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you You're very so welcome. much. You're very welcome.